It's so small. Isn't it? That's what my wife says all the time. It's so, so small. Aww, stop. <laughs> Hi, Penny. Hello. How are you? I am very cum drunk right now. Cum drunk. To be quite honest. <laughs> um, we actually just finished up doing a shoot. Mm -hmm. yeah, class as well. We just finished up doing a shoot for Hog Tide. Yep. Um, and you were awesome enough to say, all right, I'll come sit down and hang out with you for a little while. Of course. I mean, why not? Exactly. See, why not? <laughs> um, so we kind of just wing it. This is still new, so we don't talk about anything specific. We just kind of chit chat. Mm -hmm. Does that sound cool? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, aliens. Hey, you going to talk no. about aliens? <laughs> talk about aliens. <laughs> I'm just, I don't know. We can talk about anything right now. I'm, up here in the cloud. You're like, the cloud. whatever it is, I'll just talk. <laughs> um, what, if we, what did I want to ask you? What I want to talk about? Um, mm -hmm. And if anything you don't want to talk about, just say I don't want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. I don't want to talk about it. Okay. <laughs> um, there's there, your music, because I don't think, because here's the thing. I think that me personally, even when I look at you and I know you, mm. Is I'm like she's just so sweet and she's so innocent and not to say that you're not, <laughs> but then the thing that probably a lot of people don't know is like you're like a big metalhead. I do like metal. I do. It's but, fun and it's really good when you're working out, especially. You it's know? motivating. For sure. I don't think I would lift as much as like I do if it wasn't for the metal. There was a guy that I used to work out. Um, at the kink gym upstairs mm. and there was a male performer i can't think of his name now but he was super pretty and he was just mm. built like a brick shit house big big mm -hmm. dude and you could hear his little pods you could hear his yeah and it's like fucking the <laughs> and i so listened bad. to metal but his shit was on point but then he would like get down and do this lift that was like a I think it's the, is it, it's not the deadlift it's the when you get into like the, the squat mm -hmm. and you're bent over but then you're bringing it up to oh, you when you're working out. Mm, yeah, for You know like what I'm talking back. about? Uh-huh. And too. he was doing that with two plates or three plates on each. So there's 45 oh. pounds per plate. Oof. And Plus then there's the a bar. 45 pound bar and he's just oh. like it was nothing. I was like Whoa. pumping it out. Yeah. Wow. And I was like I don't maybe my metal's not hard enough to lift that way. I mean, you can always go heavier. It's true. <laughs> uh, do you have a favorite band? Ooh, that's so hard. Um, okay. Well, the first, the band that really, really got me into metal, like transitioned me into it, was Kill Switch Engage, which I think will always be like my go to favorite. Right. But since I'm starting to listen to it, I've discovered a lot more. So there's a lot. Um, well, I have to give a shout out to my friend's band. Okay. Uh, Discarnate is really good. And where are they from? Uh, they're from the UK. Okay. And it's really, it's just like heavy and like the lyrics are dark, but like very meaningful. And I, I don't know. Not only are they like super nice guys, but the, the music is good. And right. I can really appreciate that. So, um, oh God, who else? I'm like drawing a blank. Now um, let me ask you about your, your boys. Uh -huh. And it's Discarnate? Yeah. Okay. Um, are they like, for people that are into metal, I'm sure mm -hmm. they're, I'm going to leave out a genre and they're going to get pissed because it's not just metal. There's like, there's the thrash and then there's oh. the uh, black metal and the, I, so where do they fall? I could be wrong, but I would say death metal, but I, I could be totally wrong. I don't is know if I know the right. the or the high pitched is, screech? Uh, well, here's the thing. There's two guys there, um, and there's three guys in the whole band and, um, the, the one who's on guitar, he sings, but he's got the growly voice. And then the guy who's on the bass does the high pitch voice. No, so does he do the, the high pitch black metal or like the high pitch, like he's like a pop singer? It's like, wow, 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 wow. Okay. Yeah. Like the black metal kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Yeah, it's really, it's, it's a good combination because I feel like you get a little bit of both. And like, I don't know, some of their, their riffs are just like, it's really, it just gets in your brain and right. like, it just sounds so good, and I'm I'm a real sucker for just the sound of like what a, a guitar makes. Like it just, I don't know. It's like it's singing or to, something. When I was in a band, we used to refer to it as chugga chugga. Oh, it's that like, ging, 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 yeah. That yeah. sound, I'm just like yes. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. I like, like I turn into Beavis and Butthead at the same time. I'm just like do it, do it. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. You should you should totally check check it out if you're if you're into that kind of thing. And um, do it. Yeah. That's good stuff. <laughs> um, so let's talk about a little bit of porn because we can't do porn podcasts without talking about a little bit of porn. Totally. Um, I'm going to ask the super, super 
question that every you're gonna be like really JP this is what you're gonna ask me mm -hmm. what's your favorite position not on camera just when you were like I just want to I want to fuck and I'm in no one's around and it's just at the Sunday morning special what would it be mm. um I would just say I would say cowgirl because um, that's like the easiest way for me to come if I can just like be in control and obviously there's a Hitachi there so right. <laughs> Because it's me. But, uh, yeah, I just like a, I like a cowgirl because I can just fucking go to town on it. And then uh, then I'm all, like, cum drunk. I'm like, yeah, you can do whatever now. Whatever you want. <laughs> now, when the cameras aren't on, because there's a lot of people who obviously think that, you know, you girls come nonstop all the time. Blah, 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 blah. And we, oh, my God. We, we know how it's... We've discussed it on the podcast before how mm -hmm. there's not a lot of orgasms in regular vanilla porn. There's enjoyment, yes, but there's not like these power orgasms because you're as soon as you get there to like switch positions mm -hmm. or hold on for stills it or it does happen very often. Like I almost feel like it's a little inside joke between the crew when they're like, "Oh, and she's getting close. Oh, cut! We've got to do this." I'm like, "Son of a bitch!" You, I was about to come, didn't you? Um. So. <laughs> When you're off camera and you're just doing it yourself, and obviously this is, and we know this, well, I assume this about the boys, because mm -hmm. I've, I've never asked one of the boys. I, that, I'm yet, I've got to get a guy on here, because I want to do, because I, I want to do boys and girls. I want to do everybody. Uh-huh, me too. I want to do some, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> we should start our own podcast. Just, yeah! We're going to do the industry. Um, but, like, when you don't have to hold it and you can do it your way, how fast does it usually take you to get what you need? Mmm... Well, it depends. Do I have a Hitachi or am I just working with what I've got? You've got the Hitachi and oh. a cock that's not going to come until you tell it. Uh, I mean, probably less than 30 seconds. Like, if I really put my mind to it, I can get off, like, super quick. But, uh, you know, it's taken years and years of training. And I wish I could say that. It's taken years and years of practice not to do that, and yet it's still... Ah. <laughs> I always, because I'm like, it's weird because the girls can, as you know, the girls like, oh, look, I made her come. It's so hot. If a girl's like, oh, you're done. <laughs> like, And obviously it's because girls can keep going where guys can't. Yes. But it's always been this weird thing to me that it's, it's okay. Mm -hmm. It's like an accomplishment. I made her come, but when she does it, it's like... <sighs> I mean, I would say opposite, because if I can make somebody come... I'm happy. Like, I, if I don't, I, okay, when I first started having sex, like, I never had orgasms. So I just thought sex was, like, felt good, but, like, that was it. And, right. like, I really kind of got into the mindset of, like, oh, I just want to, like, please the other person. Because, like, I, I either can't come or, like, maybe I'm experiencing an orgasm. It's not what everybody says it is. It's so, not as big as I thought. Yeah, I just thought, like, all right, this is it, and it's whatever. And I, I settled for that. And, uh... <laughs> So I just got into like getting other people off, right. and so where was I going with this? <laughs> totally lost my trip. About how fast the other person was. <laughs> oh yeah, so if I can get somebody off real quick, and I'm like, fuck you, yeah, I did it. I'm um, the same way. Yeah. I feel because it's it's I feel like, and I this is again something we talk about a lot is this, the 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 ego specifically. Unfortunately, then people talk about it, and I'm not one who buys into the oh, what's this male? E mm. It kind of is. <laughs> when it comes to men, there's there's this ego gets in the way, and st and it has to be about what notch I can put in my belt and I own that pussy or whatever this is bullshit is. Mm -hmm. But the, instead of doing that and going, and I, and I think it comes with age too, you get a little older and you start, but I mean, you get to a point where you're like, I want her to have the best experience. And if my, if I'm jerking off while I'm making her scream, mm -hmm. that's just as good as being inside a pussy. Hell yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm, all, I'm, and I'm like, if I can get the person off, like that's cool. Sorry. I'm going to put this on silent. Somebody's blowing on my phone. Um, if I can, like, okay, do not disturb, right? That should do it. Um, if, if they come, like, first or whatever, and, like, as long as they're willing to, like, you know, I'll happily just sit on your face or whatever and, like, get myself off. Right. And you can just chill. But I totally get it if you're, like, just want to relax, too. I'm, like, just happy you're happy. Right. <laughs> and I think that's a big thing, too, is a lot of people miss is it's not... When you do sex, I feel like when when you do sex, like <laughs> when you go to work, when you do when you're having sex with someone, I feel like if you put everything you have into pleasing them, ninety percent of the time, I feel like it's reciprocated. It's like fuck, they just did everything they could to do this to me. Totally. And if you go and if that person goes into if everyone went into having sex with uh, someone with the I'm going to do everything for them and not worry about me. I think there'd be a lot better sex. Hell yeah, there would be. I know. It's it's this 
sad story. I, I feel bad for these people, honestly. <laughs> it's so bad for them. <laughs> um, let's see. Do you have a fantasy that you can talk about? Something that's hmm. that we can talk about that's not too 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 terrible. Yeah, what's that you have like a bucket the, list fantasy? What are the what are the graphic rules for YouTube and stuff? I don't know. I think as long as we keep our clothes on. Oh, okay. And we're not like over the top graphically using words mm. of, and being if we're not like penthouse letters that mm -hmm. used to come in and you know doing <laughs> things like that. Very explicit. Um, let me think. Gosh, I mean. So many of my fantasies have already been fulfilled because before I got into porn, I was always like, I'm, I was a little bit of a slut. So um, there would be like a few different guys that I was working with that I was all banging. And I would just always think like, God, it'd be great if they could all just band together and bang me all at the same time, you know? Like, that would be fun. And like, one would be down, but then, you know, the others, they're like, oh, I don't know about being around other dudes. So... When I finally came to porn, and through actually the help of, of kink.com, uh, I got to experience my first gangbang. And I mean, I don't know. I'm like, how do you top that? It, it, and then I got to do a few more with kink, actually. Right. And it, that was like my main thing. It's like, I just wanted to just be like, I don't know, just like pummeled with cocks and just. Right. I don't know, overwhelmed with the dicks and just like all the guys like grabbing at you and it's such a great experience in porn because the, I really feel like the guys are really like, all right, I gotta fight for my, get in there, I wanna right. fuck you and like they gotta fight for it so you just feel super hot and desirable and you know, I, I mean, I know it's all like, it's a group effort and everything but it was just so satisfying to actually have the fantasy come true and be like super safe, everyone's tested and professional it's in a they very know controlled how to do environment it. totally and, and that's the thing i think a lot of people miss too within the this about the, our industry <clears throat> excuse me is that there's this this your whores and you've got daddy issues and you've got and not to i mean they're there everybody in any I industry it's going to be issues. there yeah every, there's mm -hmm. going to be something and but there's like you know the the female exploitation and it's like they so many people they forget that they're paying and buying a, a fantasy mm -hmm. with actors who are paid to do things. Mm -hmm. And and there's either the people that are like, you filthy whore, I can't believe you're doing this and you're mostly an embarrassment to your family. Or there's the oh Captain Sabaho who wants to come in and be like, I can, you never have to do this ever again. Mm -hmm. Oh, like, yes. There's, there's constant, and I see it because social media, when they do, they don't realize, or the people, I don't know if they don't realize they don't care or whatever. Mm -hmm. But they reply or retweet or whatever it is. They when they respond, they respond to everyone that's tagged in the thing. Oh my gosh! So I've got to hear this crap, or I've got to see. And a lot of, excuse mm -hmm. me, a lot of it's really positive, and there's a lot of good stuff. But there's always the this makes me sick, or, and I'm like, what? Then stop, don't watch it. I know it's so easy to just like move on past it and like or mute it or block it or whatever. Like there's plenty of options to not have to do it and. I actually encountered this recently um, because I was super excited about a show that I like watching and I watched it live on TV like everyone else in the country. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm really selfish because I didn't think about the rest of the world and I was tweeting about it saying like, wow, I can't believe this happened and that happened and right. yeah, some people were like, oh yeah, it's crazy. But then there was other people that were like, wow, that was really selfish. It doesn't come on in Norway for three more days and you just spoiled everything. You should have given a spoiler alert. And I'm like, well, if you're trying to not find something out, like for me, if there's like, whatever, the results of a hockey game or something, like, I'm gonna stay off social media consciously because I know I'm gonna be spoiled if I go on there. And right. that's what I said. I was like, just don't take a day off social media if you want to. And they got more offended. They're like, wow, that's so pretentious of you to just like say people to get off social media. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh you my God. For I know. I was like, I'm just going to stop. I'm just going to stop. Yeah. I can't. Those people are so easily <laughs> triggered now on social media. It's triggering me. I know. It's I'm like, like it's. Fuck. And it's... that's the thing too, is it's like, you know, there's this like, you mother. Mm. But I'm like, I'm literally, I'm like, just take a break and. Go do anything else. Go outside. Like, remember when we didn't do that? We didn't stare at our phones all the time? Do you remember those days? I do. I, 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 I enjoy those days. I do, too. And then I'm like, oh, shit, I haven't been on Twitter in three days. I should probably go on. Well, then that's my problem is I, <sighs> I'm connected because I'm constantly looking because, like, mm -hmm. you know, the things that I'm doing and I'm constantly trying to build my brand. 
Mm-hmm. So, but I also, it's, it's, I saw this thing this morning. Um, I, he's, he's, uh, Russell Brand, do you mm-hmm. know him? Mm-hmm. And he was talking about the phones and how he was like, have we, as a human race, have we been missing this out of our lives? Because now that we mm-hmm. have it, because clearly we were always looking for something. Yeah. You know, I'm going to go take a shit. I need a news. I need my mm-hmm. entertainment. I can't something. just sit. Mm-hmm. And then he starts saying, and now that we have it, instantly everyone's, I got to pick it up. It's like I'm sitting here for a uh-huh. second. Let me pick up my phone. Oh, there's Check a commercial it. on because I'm watching live TV. I know. Let me look at my phone, even though I just looked at it three and a half minutes ago. And I'm looking at the same four or five. You're not reading any more news. Mm-hmm. You're looking at the same Twitter and Insta and Snap or whatever the things are. Mm-hmm. And it's like you now have to consciously say no and charge it in another room or put it upstairs. or oh, yeah. Con- it's almost like as like I quit smoking a little over four years ago, five years, something like that, four years ago. Thank you. That's a and big accomplishment. And you, if you've ever had to kick a habit, there's you have to tell yourself constantly, nope, mm-hmm. nope, nope. And you have to catch yourself and say, don't do it. I know you haven't had a, mm-hmm. you know, you haven't had a trigger for your cigarette, but like, but in that sense, you know, a couple of weeks, but now there's this first time you've done this. Since you quit smoking, oh, there's a trigger. So you constantly, but, but to have to tell yourself to not, you to don't touch your phone. Yourself. It's weird. It's weird as fuck that we are so addicted to the. Did they like it? I know. Or I, what did 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 Penny Pax post anything new? Weird. I haven't seen her talk lately. Mm-hmm. Or where's the new picture of? Oh, I must have missed it. And this like this, this obsession with staring, and mm-hmm. I'm guilty of it. But and when you're off of it, people are like, is everything okay? Like, you haven't said anything in a few days. Like, what's going on? I'm like, I just want to take a break sometimes. No. And the the weirdest thing has been happening to me. Like, and I finally looked it up because I was like, why am I getting so nauseous when I look at my phone? And not even for extended periods of time, but if I looked it up, I was like, there's got to be something on the internet about this, you know? Mm-hmm. Everything's on the internet. And uh, and I looked it up, and it's called digital motion sickness. Mm-hmm. And it's from swiping through things so much, it's making me motion sick. And I'm like, who would have ever fucking thought that that's a thing on your phone? So now what I do is I, thankfully, some of the apps like Instagram and Twitter, they have like a timer that you can set in your settings and it'll tell me if you spent 30 minutes today and I'm like, all right, I've done, if I've done everything, like I try to get all the work taken care of first before I browse, right. <laughs> try, but uh, if I don't get everything done in that in that half an hour, I'm like, I gotta cut myself off because otherwise I'll, you just get stuck into it for who it knows is. how long, it's, I, and I'm, hours. And I'm nice. horrible, but I get the same way. I get this fancy, jumpy feeling. It's anxiety almost. Mm-hmm. And it's from staring at a fucking screen. And we just, uh, we got a new uh, Nintendo Switch. Ooh, how's that? I, I really like it. It's pretty cool. And, and it's cool because if you get the console, you can play. It's like, it comes with the two controllers, but the controllers pop off. I've seen it. Yeah, so it, cool. So you can have it connected to the TV, or you can put the little controllers on and take it it's as a little play thing. It's got a little thing. TV, right? Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. And we started playing this game, and my wife and I, and we, I get to a point where I'm just like, uh, nope, I gotta go. And like, it hits me like a ton of bricks. I'm like, I gotta stop right now. And it's the oh, same thing. Oh, really? And it's because, but I also figured this out years ago. I was sitting a little closer to the TV than I do now, because you know, you don't need to have the, your entire vision that the TV <laughs> takes up. And I was playing a first person game and mm-hmm. I really? started fucking shaking. I'm like, something's wrong. And I was a still smoker. So I went outside to smoke. I'm mm-hmm. fucking just trembling. <laughs> Crazy. A couple days go by. I went like went to the bed. And I was like, "Fuck, something's something's not right." Yeah. And I drank a beer because that was my solution: smoke a cigarette, and drink a beer. <laughs> um, and it finally shook off and went away. And no pun intended. <laughs> and I was telling one of my buddies at the bar about it a couple days later, and he was like, "Oh, that's a something something seizure." Oh. I was like, "What?" And he was like, "It's a type of seizure. It's a super mild seizure, and it comes from." And he was, and I told him I was playing this first person game, and he was mm-hmm. like, "Oh, that game." He was like, "Dude, just keep playing, and you'll get used to it." Whoa! No. You get used to it. Yeah, he said your body, your brain eventually Whoa. will program, reprogram itself to get used to that super oh rapid movement God. because it's I beyond reality. Think. Yeah, that's. Hot. We were when we went. We just got a new TV about uh, I don't know six months ago, mm-hmm. and we were in there, and there's like you know here's the entry level, and then the this, and then the mm-hmm. this, and then this. You get to a point where it's like, all right, am I really about to spend this much money for this one? And as we're talking to the guy and he's showing us the wall of TVs and talking about it, behind him is an 8K 
TV. Oh my god. And it's it's beyond what we see and touch and and so it's so hyper realistic and the, everything was crisp like as you we our mm -hmm. eyes are lenses. Wow. And the shit was moving behind him and I finally was like we got to move and I got that that itchy oh, feeling really? like I can't stand here because it was so Sweet. fucking HD yeah. that my brain was like get the fuck out of here with it. Also like do we really need that much HD? Like I don't want to see that much. Especially in our industry. I know. I'm like please don't. 4K mm. is more than enough. <laughs> I have sat at my computer because we shoot at 4K and then comp it gets compressed down to uh, 1080 for mm -hmm. kink. Mm -hmm. um, and at the end of the day if you're unless you're plugged in and everyone's on like this hyper speed that none of us are even allowed or can afford, mm -hmm. you're never gonna get the full the full full four K quality on a, on the internet. No. You can download it, Are, but do uh, computers even play four K? Is that even a thing? I know there's four K TVs, but I don't know that you get is the there 4K, same. Is there four K like laptops? I don't uh, think that's a thing. I don't know that it. Sh I don't think that it looks well. Right. Or good or whatever. So it seems like a little silly. Uh, the four K like we took forever. I think we were. Uh, me and my crew were the first ones, I think, to start shooting 4K. Oh, really? And we sent a couple of them back, and we delivered them, you know, edited in 4K, and they were like, so wait, whoa, 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 too. wait, wait, because, yeah, they're huge. Huge file. And they were like, no, 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 we, no, 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 no. And I was like, but I called you guys and talked to you, and you sent me, like, the settings and all of this thing for 4K. They're like, we thought you were just asking for you. We didn't think, no, we don't want it delivered. We love that you're shooting in 4K, and then, you know, when the time when comes, they can push a switch, and all of our stuff can show up as 4K, mm -hmm. like, apparently, or whatever. Oh, that's nice. But, and it looks, it does look better, because if you take 4K and you take this beautiful big thing and then sh shrink it down, it still looks better than the average 1080. Absolutely, yeah. So but it's still, it's, it's... You, it, the girls are like, fuck, I can't believe I missed that one hair, or I, I can't know. believe there's... Like you, you, you now have to go in and do certain things and post to basically take it back to not be so crystal clear because I know. at I'm, the end of the day, we're all real humans and we all have real flaws and totally. I'm so thankful for the, uh, the, there's a few companies that'll put like a kind of a dreamy filter on it. I'm like, yeah, this make me look softer. <laughs> Smooth me there's out. There's too many lines that I didn't know I had. <laughs> that's the thing too, yeah. You, you get it and you're like, fuck. Whoa, I'm... that's what I look like? <laughs> that's, thanks everybody for mm -hmm. telling me. Oh, fuck. Yeah, hopefully, uh, can we just stay with 4K for a little bit? Like, I think we will. I hope we will. I don't, I don't, I mean, most computers can't handle it as it is. And I think the next step is beyond, I don't even know that, I mean, there's the ultra, I think the ultra HD mm -hmm. is 4K mm -hmm. or maybe, I don't know. Close, right? It's weird because the 1080 was on the bottom end. Mm -hmm. So it was like the 19 something by 1080, right? I think that's the way it went. So it was a smaller number, which is the HD. But 4K is now the top number. Mm -hmm. So it's weird because if you look at it and you're like, well, the side, the, the, it was 19, I think it's 1930 something or whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. I know somebody's like, JP. <laughs> That's wrong. And then it's 108 by 1080, which was, like I said, the smaller number of the ratio. But on the 4K, the 4K represents, if I'm not mistaken, the larger number of the ratio. So it didn't oh. climb that much, no. but it's still enough to where it's like, it's, it's, it's too it's, much. Yeah, it's very clear. <laughs> Too clear. Exactly. Oh my goodness. So, um, let's talk about, because I don't know that people, and if you don't want to disclose this, you don't have to, hmm. um, you have a certain thing that you enjoy that most people would not understand at all. That has to do with a little mouse and <laughs> castle. I don't know, do, your, do, do a lot of your fans know this? <gasps> yes, absolutely. I think, I think, um... It's no secret, and I'll be I'll be there with the mouse in the castle in uh, four to five days. How often? Uh, we're talking about if you haven't figured it out, it's it, it's a it's a thing that's been around for a while. <laughs> well, I'm going to the world in five days, but I'm actually going to Disneyland tomorrow for the Halloween party, so I'm really excited for that. How often are you there per year? Do you think if you had to guess? Ooh, an either or place. It's. That'd be really hard because there was one at one point um, where Adrian and I were going it like twice a week because it was just so dead and like just it's so fun. I don't know. It's like it's very nostalgic and I just have so many happy memories of being at Disney when I was younger right. and it's just I don't know. It's magical and and oh, well, that's what they say. Yeah, it's really weird. It's like they're 
they've totally brainwashed me. So I'm Well, I mean, I know a lot of people are that way. A lot of people, like, that's their jam. And, like, <clears throat> you sit there and say, hey, JP, we're going to go to this place. It's going to be fucking crowded as hell. <laughs> you're going to have to do, if anything you want to do for fun, and even get a beer, you're going to have to wait in a fucking line. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to upgrade you and sell you something that can, says you can jump a line, but that only cuts out the first hour. you still got a 30 to 45 line. minute wait. <laughs> do you want to go? I will look at you and say, I would rather get on my knees and slam my dick in the toilet seat. Ah. I just, but the thought, like I, once I'm there and I like with my mm -hmm. kid and you see the people having fun, it's just, I don't like crowds. I don't like lines. Oh, I don't like rides. I don't really either I'm like the crowds. Bug. But it's the whole experience. It's definitely like, I don't know, it's a thing. But I mean, I will say, I'm definitely like, okay, uh, I went there for New Year's last year and it was just, it was so packed. Like, it, at one point we were trying to make it over to the castle for the countdown and we couldn't even make it over there because it was like, just neck. And that was like, a little uncomfortable for me not not my favorite memory there but for the most part I just I don't know and I like I like socializing with other people because most of them are also Disney fans and they whatever like I'll have like some some kind of Disney merchandise on and they might be like oh where did you get that or something and so it's like I a camaraderie. Just like to nerd out with them yeah totally and I've noticed there's people who are either that's their jam and they will fucking die that way being like the hardcore <laughs> yeah. fuck you judge me all you want this is my jam and then there's the people that are like I don't care there's no in between uh -huh. where like I'll go I, I like to go two or three times there's none of that that's either I don't care or they're the extreme mm -hmm. and it's let me ask you this is it the park? Is it the movies? Is it the <laughs> overall? Is there? Is it everything included? Is it the character? Like, what is it that makes you go? That's what I like to do. Because uh, here's the thing: I've also heard that to do the park thing, it's better to do like a weekend jammed, and because then you want to be like a season pass person or like whatever. Sure. So if you show up and it is that eh, I don't want to be here right now, you can leave, go hang out at the mm -hmm. hotel, and then sneak back in later that night or go Absolutely. back the next day. Mm -hmm. And there's all kinds of perks of being in the hotel too. Like you get to get in earlier before everyone else, and there's usually a dope pool. Like I don't know Wait if minute, I could a dope pool or an adult pool. A dope. Oh, I was like, Disney has an adult <laughs> pool? I now will. I'll go. Right? No kids allowed. Um, no, I don't know if I can really pinpoint exactly what it is. Like, um, I mean, I visually, like, looking at the the decorations and how they have every, like, like, set up and the details, like, that to me is very visually, like, appealing. Um, definitely a the movies, um, hearing the, the music from the movies, and then um, in parts of Disneyland and Disney World, they have um, 40s music playing, which I guess Walt Disney was like a big fan of, and I'm also a huge fan of 40s, so whenever I hear that, it just, I don't know, it, it just puts me in a really like happy like mood. I, I don't know if I can put my finger on it besides that they've brainwashed me. I really don't know. Because it's so much, they... I don't know if it's brainwashed, though. I think it's the <laughs> thing, because there's so many people, and I don't know that it's brainwashed, that it's, I think it's, there is the nostalgia, there's the happiness, mm -hmm. there's the, like, there was that one moment somewhere that something stuck, and that's forever going to be. And it's the cool thing, I think, too, is that you hear so many people like, oh, I wish I could go back to being a teenager. Here's the thing. We can never go back, because if you were to take everything you know right now and go back to your 15-year-old self, oh it's not going to be the same. <laughs> Nothing. It's it just, it's not. Oh, my God. But, and you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. But Disney is. Totally. That park's always going to be there. Yeah. You can always go watch the little deer mm -hmm. or the princess mm -hmm. or whatever the character is, because they, at some point, will re-release if it's not released. And they also are smart about how they do that stuff. Oh, my God. But I feel like that's the reason, if they, that's the thing, that... Take, that's as close as you're ever gonna get to going back in time because it's you know still what? there. You're so right. That might be I what think it I is. just had an epiphany about that. Wow. So yeah, I'm so smart sometimes. Sounds, <laughs> sounds, now you're smart all the time. Thanks. Um, but that really does make sense now because I, I, all I have is like really happy memories from there as, as being a kid, and I got, I was really lucky that my mom took me to Disney World a bunch and Disneyland even when we lived here in California and. And it was just always such a good time, and, and I like like the rides and and the you know 
the music, the atmosphere, it's meeting the characters. Like, I don't know why. I know, I know the characters obviously. were fun for me. Yeah. And I was like, I'm, I'm like, we finally got over to the park because it was, we went with a big group of family. Mm -hmm. And, you know, everybody wanted to go here. And then they would go here and go here and go here. Oh, and I'm yeah. like, he's, at the time, I think he was like three. And I'm like, he doesn't, he'll ride these things, but mm -hmm. this isn't his jam. He wants to. And I kept asking my wife, I'm like, where are the fucking characters? That's what yeah, he needs to I see. Like that. And we finally got over and we got this great picture of him running full speed towards Goofy. Just oh, as hard as he can. Goofy. And it, we got like I snapped as fast as I could. So you see the arms and then mm -hmm. you see him like bent over holding him. Oh my god. And that was his adorable. jam. And mm -hmm. and he on his own has started like, hey, can we go do that again? Yeah. So the that happiness and seeing it in his eye, I'm like, I'll suck it up mm -hmm. and I'll deal with it's Disney. Contagious. And also I found out that when I went years ago that one of our, our friends of mine back in California, she was like, JP, because, you know, when I usually don't have a hat on, I try and pop my hair up and I try and make it look nice. Oh. And she was like, JP, you know, there's a there's an Instagram account called Dilfs of Disney. Oh, yeah, there and is. And I was like, I know all about it. <laughs> <Look at you. laughs> I know all about it. I might have snapped a few photos before. So, yeah, I was, I, I was like, and I... Silly to myself, I'm like, maybe I could be a dill for Disney. But then I was like, totally, I don't totally. think I, I, I don't know the criteria. I think that the you ones that I've seen on there. You dad. That's basically it. And be at Disney. Well, yeah, I've been <laughs> once and I'm like, I, I, I have my middle of the road dad thing going on. I, I don't know. The ones I've seen, the guys are really pretty. And I think I'm a little more rough around the edges than the, who knows. Nah, you know, here's okay, the thing. You're in. I, 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 I. I joke when I, I'm self-deprecating, but at the end of the day, like I, I joke and then I tell people, I was like, but you know what? I'm almost a 50 year old man and I still have oh super hot ass young women who were like, JP, I need you to do things to me. So I'm like, you know, I don't care if I'm a dilf of Disney or not. So whatever. <laughs> yes, you're winning either way. Exactly. But uh, in my personal opinion, I say you're qualified. All right. Yes, you're I'm gonna have in. To fix the hair. I have to and go catch back. you one time at Disney and be like, ah, oh, there you go. That's what I should do when next time we go because it's gonna happen probably sooner than later. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're gonna do the weekend thing because having an eight-year-old, you so suddenly fun. are like, oh, it's meltdown and we're done and we have to leave, but then we'll go back later. So, are you gonna stay on the property? Probably stay on okay. property. Okay, stay at the Disneyland hotel mm -hmm. or the the Grand California is really nice, but it's a little more expensive for I don't feel like that much of an upgrade. Right. But the Disneyland hotel has an amazing pool with a monorail slide and a really cool tiki bar with adult beverages. Mm -hmm. But the pool is dope and it's totally a thing to do. Like if the parks like sucks, whatever, go and just chill at the pool for whatever or, or go to the room too. But like right. the pool is really nice and there's no one there during the day. So mm -hmm. you basically have like this giant pool to yourself and the slides. We'll have to call and let you guys know when we're coming <laughs> because we've got- uh, Let me plan your trip for you. <laughs> I, I, or we can just meet up and hang out. Yes, I'm always down to go to Disney. So she's, uh, <laughs> Becky's got a cousin um, who lives in Southern California. I forget exactly where, or I'm not going to say where. Um, but it's in Southern California, and she is the Disney person. Her oh, family, her husband, okay, like that's okay. their... I think they... Yes, I was going to make sure I said this right. The, she was actually married in the Rose Garden at Disney. Oh, my God. I'm so jealous. Yeah. So she, like, they're Disney people. Oh, that's so, amazing. And that's the thing. That they've got two kids that are around my kid's age, so mm -hmm. we're going to... Um, Hit them up so it could be like a thing, but then we can call mm -hmm. them you and Adriana. Like, totally. Hey, let's, let's make it a thing. Yeah, we'll be your tour guides. I we, love it. We know how to do the park most efficiently. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I'm like this map and it's upside down. And, <laughs> oh my God. And, it, and I'm usually really good with directions, but then I'm looking around like, what the fuck? It I is don't... a little disorienting. There's so much going on too. and I feel like maybe, and I've never went in and had adult beverages. I feel like that would... Because again, there's a try. fucking line, so I'm like, I'm not gonna stand in line mm -hmm. for 30 minutes for a fucking Coors Light. Mm -hmm. Don't yeah. judge me. Definitely, no, I feel you. Um, well, the good thing about California Adventure is that they always have adult beverages, so you can always get those. Oh. Um, Disneyland, Disney, like, uh, yeah, Disneyland. I don't think they have any alcohol in the park, but California Adventure totally does, and you can you can have as many drinks as you like. It's very nice. Yeah. Maybe. It would help. I, I I usually, I don't drink too much, but every every once in a while when they have like, because um, they have all these like cool cocktails that they make that are like the Pixar colors or whatever. Like right. they, they're fantastic. So you have to try it. It's, they're good. I like it. 
Going back to the, you were talking about the 40s music earlier. Mm-hmm. Is that 40s? Is, is it? Because I know the 20s was like the big band swing. Is that 40s still too? Totally. Yeah, like Glenn Miller and um, oh fuck. Oh, I can't think of any. Other now that you've been put on point. You're like, I know. But uh, that's yeah. It's more yes, like the swing big that. band. Okay. Totally. Yeah, I love it. I don't know. There's something about it. It just like sounds like romancy and, and I mean not all of it, but some of the like more slower paced ones. Right. And then there's some that are like really fucking weird. Like there's this one song. It's okay. I I didn't know. I had to look it up. But it's <laughs> the actual words are the old master painter who lived down the hill or something like that. And when he's saying it, it's Sounds so I'm like, come on, they were up to something. Like, why would they pick that choice of words? Right. And it's like, it's I'm like, come on. Dude, well the thing is is there's <laughs> always been and they still are, that people throw in things and say things and they don't have to say fuck or uh-huh. any other things. I don't have to go into like the you know the terminology. But they still do it and it's horrible because I love all kinds of music and my kid right now is a huge uh, he's getting he's learning new hip hop. Oh. Pop hip hop, if you would. Post that? Malone. Oh, okay. So, and that guy's cool. He's a young, I, I act like I know him. I don't know him. But he's the younger guy. I've seen interviews with him. And I didn't mm-hmm. want to like him because he's, you know, I'm like, silly little kid. On his face. Like, and I didn't yeah. care for any of this newer stuff. And I've been trying mm-hmm. because I am such a hip hop fan since, like, oh. I was, since I was probably nine or ten years old. Like, really? Old, like, like Slick Rick and... Before that. Like, Whoa. fucking, like, I was, like, listening to, like, Break In. And, oh. like, I was, like, that was all about those movies in the 80s. And, mm-hmm. like, fucking... Oh, my God. Uh, way back. So I've been listening to it for a long time. And as a kid, you don't know what certain words mean or certain terms mean. Right. But in, in, in hip-hop, there seems to be a little more innuendos Mm -hmm. and it's everywhere but in hip-hop especially so i hear certain music and we always had the clean version on Uh because he hears enough bad words from me i don't need to hear it from music (laughs) and slip on the schoolyard like something something shit fuck and i'm like (laughs) so um but anyway the like the the things like and i didn't know this until like i i heard the song as a once i got older but there is an eagle song hotel california Mm -hmm. there's a line that um i couldn't make it and she was too drunk to care or too tired to care back in the 60s and 70s they didn't call it coming they called it making it and i didn't put it together because my parents i would hear Overhear them say, and I was like, "What are you? What are they making? What uh-huh. are they? Talk, what do they mean? They're gonna make? What is making it? And Weird. it never. And then when I years later, as I got you know became an adult, and I because you know you're kids, you don't pay attention. Totally. Um, well, you do, but it doesn't make sense. So you're like, whatever. That my parents are dumb. <laughs> and then when I heard that song, was listening to the words and kind of getting into that. Excuse me, that song, and I heard too too was something. I think it's too drunk to make it, and she's too tired to care. And I'm like, you. We all know that. It's Whiskey totally, Dick. Totally, yeah. And I was like, holy wow, fuck. Wow, so we've never caught that before. So holy there's shit. all of these songs that have these little, like, just throw it in there mm-hmm. real quick and hope that they can get away with it. Very clever. I know. There, there's, I can't think of what it is now, but there was something, another song that I heard recently, and I was like, what? That's what he's been saying this whole time? And even from, like, the 50s, I mean, there's a lot of, like, I don't know about the 40s, but, like, the 50s and 60s, like, with doo-wop kind of mm-hmm. stuff. There's a lot of stuff that gets slid in there. Oh, yeah, there's this one song. It's, like, uh, it's it just sounds so, like, Dom Sub. Like, it's 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 a 40s song, and it, it's, like, oh, fuck. I think it's called, like, Button Up Your Overcoat or something like that. Like, it sounds harmless, mm-hmm. but then when you listen to it, he's, like, uh take good care of yourself because you belong to me. And like all these things and I'm like, whoa, this sounds a little like possessive right. and stuff. And he's like, it, he's just rattling off all the things like make sure you eat an apple and don't hang out with these types of guys and like all these things. And I'm like, wow, he's really putting it out there. Like you don't fucking do anything until I say you can do it. And I'm That's like, wow, hot. it is hot. It's so hot. Really hot. But I'm like, I never figured that out until I listened to it, and I was like, oh, this is a little, it's a little kinky. There's, um, <laughs> there's a lot of songs that kind of, again, slide stuff in like that. There was that that controversy that was over the uh, that, that Christmas song a year or two ago, Which one? Baby It's Cold Outside. Oh, yeah. It's so rapey, right? And, it's, <laughs> and that's the thing, but it's like, it's... 
everyone took it that way but if you really sit there and listen to it because he was like you know she says i need to go and he's like but it's cold outside mm -hmm. and everyone's like it sounds like he's and people took it to an extreme because that's and where she we literally are. says the answer is no but Save she me. and she, she says no i know <laughs> <laughs> and he keeps trying, but he's here's the, but the funny part is, is like he, he, it's, it's such a flirty, mm -hmm. cute song mm -hmm. because she's like, you know, but maybe I should go. And he's like, and it's like one of those, mm -hmm. it's like, it's like when everyone's naked and everything's going on and you're like, uh, well, if you don't want to, you don't have to, uh -huh. it's, we all know where it's going totally. and then for someone to take something that seemed so innocent and, yeah. and it could have been a lot worse. West seen it. And they people just and I was like, oh fuck. Have you ever seen the Key and Peele skit about that? No. There's a whole skit. You've got to look it up. Key and Peele, they do like little like a skit comedy, right. and it's about that song. And it's these two dudes, but they're one's dressed like a woman and one's dressed like a man, and it's just hilarious because she's like, oh, I'm gonna leave, and he's like, no, you're not, and he's like, it's cold outside. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. I'll have to it's look like that these up. two black dudes, <laughs> they're hilarious. Um. There was a, a song that's by Louis Armstrong, and oh. it's called Black and Blue. Mm -hmm. Have you heard the song? Mm -hmm. Have you paid attention to what he's talking about? No, but now I'm wondering. He, Black and Blue one of the lines in the song actually says, I'm white on the inside. Mm -hmm. Black and Blue, he's talking about being a black man in his generation, which obviously there was not equality. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not going to get deep into, you know, civil rights right now because that, that's a whole other podcast <laughs> um but he was like he basically was talking about the oppression that he was going through wow. and how he was blue wasn't the color he was blue because mm -hmm. he was sad yeah. so he's black and sad oh. because of the way he was treated and he actually says i'm white on the inside mm -hmm. and he all he's like all i want is to be treated fairly oh. and treat me like 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 you guys yeah, don't be else? mean to me because i'm not I'm, I'm on the inside I am, the same. but yeah. the term that I'm white on the inside, like it's the first time I heard that song and I was like, wait a minute. And I sat and I kept listening to it over and over and it's, it's a sign of the times. It's mm -hmm. a thing that what was going on then, but it's the same thing until you listen Ooh. to it and go there's listen to message. it and say, yeah. it's there. And there's so, so there's music is usually, unless it's cause there's some that's just, it's like someone wrote it I'm and someone it. sung and, mm -hmm. but a lot of the time the, 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 the artists, like it's, uh, it's, it's, it's it comes from a place. There's yeah. a reason. There's inspiration that makes them write it, and like if you listen to a lot of aggressive metal, mm -hmm. a lot of it's about like love and heartbreak. It's like it's not mm -hmm. like I mean, don't get me wrong. There's Satan and there's like all of the crazy <laughs> sure. stuff, but you know, there's a lot of weird. When you hear it, you're like, wait a minute, is this is he talking about mm -hmm. being heart? This boo, mm -hmm. he's talking about heartbreak. Oh yeah, or being sad because he lost a lover or something. Mm -hmm. So there's all of this stuff, and it's like the same thing with uh, the, uh, oh, what's the fucking guy's name? He uh, unfortunately committed suicide. He was the, mm. the rap rock band from the 90s. Oh, um, Chester. Lincoln Park, yeah, Chester. Once you, oh once my it, God. you when go back and died, listen to the music, you're like. All these red flags and nobody fucking was paying attention. Because it seemed like, like he, he was just singing. Like he to be on watch yeah. 100% of the time. It it's seemed so like sad. he was just making music for angsty young kids yes. and in reality he was holy fuck yeah. yes that was like the weirdest thing for me to like listen to it after he died and i was just like wow he's just been crying out for help this whole time and yeah. nobody's fucking listening yeah. it's crazy like, what happened holy yeah. shit yeah, yeah that was wild but you know where my mind went when you first said black and blue? I was like, oh shit, is it a song about someone getting beat up? No. They got bruises on them? I was like, wait a minute, I gotta listen to this. This is a kinky song. But there's also, he's got some, like, his. he was very, he was a great lyricist. He, oh um, yeah, I'm a big there fan was of Louie. I don't know that it, it was his song. I think it was Mac the Knife. Mm -hmm. I don't think that, I don't know if he originally wrote it, because I feel like I heard someone else sing it uh -huh. before him. Mm -hmm. But Mac the Knife is a cool last song. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the same thing. He's talking about having basically uh, that. What's that funny thing? The mafia. You're gonna go swimming with the fishes because uh -huh. it talks about how he comes in. He does the dirt and then he mm -hmm. gets, puts lead shoes on you and jumps you in the fucking river. Mm -hmm. And he and he he romanticizes the way I forget the exact words that he says, but um, basically. Uh, and something, something, and it bubbles in a pool of red, and I'm like, holy oh, fuck. And he's talking so about someone nice. laying on the floor bleeding out. Mm -hmm. So it was like, it's... Oh, yeah. Listen to the shit. It's fucking dark. It's 
darker than you think. Because I love music, and I think that's like there's so. Do you hear people, you know, like, oh, I don't watch TV, or I don't read, or mm -hmm. I don't do this. I. Even my grandmother, who refused to watch TV, she didn't watch TV, she never learned to drive. Okay. Um, she read the newspaper, and she read it from front to back, but it was not in order. So oh. she had this part, and then she'd go read this part, and then mm -hmm. she'd do this, and then she'd, and eventually she would read every single word in the newspaper. She had the newspaper every day. Wow. And she would read the entire thing, and but she, my grandfather would watch um, TV. He loved watching TV. Mm -hmm. Um, and when we'd go to visit, you'd come down in the summer in the mornings and it's still, it's dark because we're up so early mm -hmm. and you come down and this is early eighties and there's that fucking Jane Fonda yoga, you know, yes. jazzer size going mm -hmm. on. And he's sitting there with his feet up and just a shit eating grin from ear to ear. Watching that? Oh watching God, these girls hilarious. in the fucking tights doing Waking their thing. <laughs> and I didn't get it until I got older and I was like, you dirty little fucker. He was an awesome guy, but it was mm. it was weird that he they were so different. But the grandmother who would refuse to watch the only time she would watch TV is when she'd come in and she'd call him. She's like, "Time for dinner," blah blah blah, mm -hmm. and she'd stand there and kind of glance at it and then mm. walk away. But she loved music. Yeah. And the music, I feel like, is the one thing that connects so many people. Mm -hmm. with, and there's so many genres of it. I don't know. I just I'm a I'm a huge music fan. Oh, but. Sam, I think that music is like so helpful and therapeutic in so many different ways. Like. I really, I don't want to think about a world without music. Mm -mm. It's, it's helpful. I had a buddy of mine that's kind of prepper-ish. Mm -hmm. I feel like everyone to a certain degree has a little bit of it in them. But he, I made a comment one time about like, you know, if, if shit hit the fan and there was a reset on the world. And there's theorists about this to where the, you know, there was actually a TV show at one point about mm -hmm. it where the electricity just got shut off. Oh. There's no one internet, there's no electricity, and there's no Sounds turning it back great. on. Like, it's gone. Mm -hmm. So you basically get set back hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. um, and, of course, people colonize, and they fight, and there's mm -hmm. wars, and their people are trying to take back over, and everyone wants to be the ruler, and there's all this crazy stuff going on. And all I kept thinking was, there's no music. Like, there's none. There's, like, what did, what did you hum? Mm. Or if someone has an instrument, but... Yeah, instruments. But it's like there's like and I oh record player right? Can, and there's wines. If you could oh. find one that was old yeah, enough yeah. and the record you wanted to listen to. And the record. And that's then you got to find somebody with the Popeye arm that sits right. there and does the the uh. cranking. So as I was telling him about this, we were sitting around shooting the shit one night, and I was saying, I was like, that's the one thing. Like if if I like I'm set, I'd be okay with the reset. All of us would be freaked out, but we would all be able to manage, and it would take mm -hmm. some time, but we would all reset, learn how to farm, learn how to fucking That'd to to harvest your own food again. Mm -hmm. Um, and then if you didn't have it, you went without, unless you found someone that did have it, and then you bartered with them and say, mm -hmm. hey, you're not a good hunter, I am, or you're not a good, you don't, you can't grow a good garden, but I can, and mm -hmm. you barter to get the things back, because it wasn't, there were only a few generations ago that there weren't grocery stores. Oh, yeah. That there, you grew your own food, you harvest your own food, but you didn't eat. Mm -mm. Or you had someone that gave it for a service, and there was the bartering right. thing. So as we're talking about all that, he, uh... One day I go to his house and we're shooting the shit. He's like, hold on, I got something for you. And he comes out and he's got this little solar panel that you can plug one USB into. Oh. And he was like, make sure you've always got your music on your phone. He was like, because you know that at that point everything was moving to a cloud. He was like, keep it uh -huh. downloaded. So if shit hits the fan, you can at least you have your music. And I was like, it. I think oh, I love you. Like ready? it was such a cool thing. You're going to be fine. And but the then apocalypse. when I charged it, it got really hot and started melting. So I was like, maybe I need to get a better. It was just oh, one fuck. of like, it was one of those like off of wish or whatever. Oh, cool. But it was the that's heart. It was where yeah. his heart was. No, I thought totally. it was super sweet. Yeah, that, it would be very quiet. I would have to make friends with musicians like immediately. Mm -hmm. Be like, you can you just hang around and play music all the time, please? I know, like I would go fun. find where the food was, mm -hmm. find my ammunition, mm -hmm. um, find shelter, and then find a music store and take like a harmonica or a oh, yeah. drum or Something. maybe all of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ever played a musical yeah, instrument? Right. No, I never. I mean, I I tried to like learn piano and stuff when I was growing up because of like just. To be able to like accompany myself um, for like auditions, but I never, never really wasn't. My instrument is my voice. Do you sing? <laughs> yeah, I grew up doing like musical theater and just like regular theater and stuff like that. So Gosh. I always just kind of focused on that. But I, I kind of, I wish I would have. I wish my mom would have pushed me to do something like that. That you have to 
physically show, you know? Because right. I, I, I think that musicians are just absolutely fascinating, and the fact that you can, like, take this thing and take your body and, like, make these sounds is, like, yeah. so cool, so cool I was a drummer for 11 years, and oh I, I experimented with the guitar for a few years, and mm -hmm. I was, like, the power chord king, like, I could, you know, the two-finger mm -hmm. thing. I was never super great. I, I could never grab my head around, like, doing solos and being staying in the right key. And, uh, that's a lot of shit going yeah. on. And, there, and then the thing that gets me is, and it, I mean, I'm not taking away from drummers, because, I mean, I had the double bass and the hands, so feet and hands are doing stuff. Um, I mean, it's it's thing, lot. too. But... You've got this person who's all of these keys and the timing, mm -hmm. and the timing's hard enough as it is. And you, I feel like people space. who. It's like some little tiny yeah, space. Yeah, <laughs> doing like this. And then you've got the people who do that and then sing. I know. it's It just blows my mind. Yeah. But you know what I do? I always love watching the drummer when they're playing something live because they make the best faces. They're, they're so horrible. focused. It's hilarious. <laughs> I'm like, he's so in it. And he's just like, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, mm. Yeah, and that or when a guitarist it. does a solo, mm -hmm. guitar oh, solos yeah. they start and drummers, weird posture. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> they're just like, oh, oh, oh. it's yeah, like they feel, feel it totally. <laughs> I'm always but like, I do too. I I'm, I can feel it through them. It's I don't know. Maybe it's because I can't actually play an instrument myself that I'm like so fascinated by like what I don't know. But I I can always listen to live music like. Yeah. It just and it doesn't have to be music. Place. It does, yeah, it doesn't even have to be music that I necessarily, and it's hard to find kind of music that I don't listen to because, mm -hmm. like on my, <clears throat> so I have XM in my car, and Same. you have the three programmed like then on the little screen so you can see the three channels, mm -hmm. and it's eighties, because eighties you can go back to the fifties or oh, yeah. whatever, and then you can go up through the nineties and two hundred pop stuff. Oh, that's smart. So I kind of find, but I, 80s is a good starting point. Plus, mm -hmm. I was raised in the eighties. <laughs> the next one over is. Um, uh, Shade 45, which is a hip hop station. Oh, yeah. And mm -hmm. it's the one that Eminem has. But mm -hmm. you go left and it's hip hop nation, and then it's uh, LL Cool J's uh, old school hip hop. Oh, but damn. if you go to the right, it's The Heat, which is like our modern R&B mm -hmm. and hip hop. Yeah, yeah. And then the next one over is, I think, Fly, which is like 90s and 2000 hip hop. Mm. I love hip hop. Yeah. But then to the right of that, so that's the, that's the 80s. Then there's the, the Shade. Or, uh, yeah, Shade mm -hmm. 45. Then there's Bluegrass. Mm -hmm. And the Bluegrass, you can move through the country and stuff. Yeah. And then there's Turbo, I think, which is like the 90s, 2000 metal. Not mm -hmm. metal, like, oh, but I like. I explore more of my series. Um, it's got like uh, Corn and mm -hmm. System of the Down and good Tool. Shit. So it's good stuff, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then next to that is Chill, which is Techno Chill. Chill, EDM, yes, I love those. And then. The final one on the bottom is the joint, which is reggae. Mm -hmm. so, so good. I've got it. So Some I'm consistent, and I just go all over the place. Uh -huh. I love this stuff. The only thing you're missing is the the comedy channels. I have one preset for the. There's like a raw dog comedy, which is like the really raunchy shit, and okay. then there's like the Comedy Central. And I think Kevin Hart has one too, but I I like to flip between those because. I'm a big fan of, like, stand-up and stuff. I am, too. The wife hates it. She was like, I don't get it. Because I hear... My problem is I will laugh. Mm -hmm. And if something's funny to me and I'm childish, <laughs> so, like, farting will still make... I will cry. Yeah, bathroom and humor. It's funny. When I say I cry, like, I'm not the type... I'm not talking like, ha, 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 that's so funny. Like, <laughs> I can't breathe and I have to get up and I have to remove myself from the situation. <laughs> because if I pause the TV and go away, I'm like... Okay, I can breathe, and I'm wiping mm -hmm. my tears, and I look at the frozen picture. Oh. I see, and it instantly takes me back to where I was, and I can't. So there's times I've had to it. stop a special and walk away for days because That's I can't funny. stop laughing. <gasps> oh my god! But so since she hates it, it's kind of those are the things. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> are you a fan of um, Tom Segura? He's he's on Joe Rogan's podcast sometimes. Who is he? He's like, uh, like he's 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 Spanish, or he's yeah. Um, is he a comedian? Yes, he's a comedian. Okay. Sorry, uh, he's a comedian. He's a uh, he's he's like friends with Bert Bert Kreischer and all those guys that they have on there. Is he one of the sober October guys? Yes. Okay. He you should totally check out some of his specials because it. I am like dying on some of the topics he covers are fucking so funny. Have you seen the new Chappelle special? Uh, yes. I haven't watched it yet. Like, I think I need to make the time to go do it because I love, I've loved You're gonna him. have to watch it more than once because there's gonna be things you're gonna miss the first time and it's so funny. I think he's hilarious and it's I know when he, 
not this one, but the one before it, where he made a comeback. Because mm-hmm. remember, he was like, fuck all this shit. I'm sick of you sensitive oh, yeah. bitches. And I agree. Mm-hmm. But he came back, and he's like, and he start, he's kind of making fun of it, and he catches, sh- and people were, were like, he was like, I came back, and I, I, he's like, and I'm already back, and realizing you bitches are still sensitive. Mm-hmm. And he went into a few different things, and people started talking, and he's like, shut the fuck up! And he gets so mad at him. Oh, yeah. And then he, when they did this special, everyone's like, you know, he came out swinging, and he's mm-hmm. like, I don't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. I'm going to make fun of who I want. Oh, he gets everyone. And it's I dark, should. but it's fucking funny like there's some topics where you're like oh but you're totally right <laughs> and this, like i don't know if she even still around did you ever uh watch any of uh or listen to any of lisa lampanelli oh yeah yeah she's bitch. fucking funny but she's the same way mm-hmm. she was like bring me the gay every person of color all the straight all the white i don't oh give God. a fuck because you're all in trouble he has a whole segment about the alphabet people it's just please go watch it tonight watch it's it. so because I love him, because he, he, because when he had the Chappelle show, and mm. he did the white family with the name that white people aren't supposed mm-hmm. to say, um, and then the, he was the blind leader of the clan. Oh my God, the white, or the black racist, or what yes. did they call him? What, what was it? I don't remember what they called him, but yeah, he didn't know he was black. Yeah. Oh my God, that was the funniest and he, shit. And then he divorced his wife for being a... Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh my God. Ridiculous. Because he stood his ground as still being a white supremacist, mm-hmm. even though he was black. Mm-hmm. There were, um, and like I tell you guys, research this, I can't guarantee it, but there's, <laughs> um, I, there were rumors back in the day when this was going on, because there wasn't, you didn't go on the internet and Google things Mm-mm. as much back then, Mm-mm. but that supposedly some of the biggest leaders in the black community, like Jesse Jackson level people, we're like, you gotta stop this shit. And he's like, fuck you. Good. Like he stood his ground and was like, fuck you motherfuckers. Yeah. And they're like, you're doing, you're taking us backwards and this thing because they do with the, the white family with the N word name. Mm-hmm. He did every goddamn stereotype he could think of. Yeah. Every one of them. And they were like, you're taking us back. And he was like, fuck you. And I'm not, because he, no. it's, and that's what I think I liked about him so much is he stood his ground no matter what, mm-hmm. kiss my ass. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do it my way or I'm not going to do it at all. Yeah. I, that's how it should be. And besides like making these jokes and, and getting people to like ease up about it, it's, it's helping it not be a problem anymore. I would think, you know, right. like if, if. If racism is like if I don't know how to phrase it, but like if it wasn't a, it wouldn't be a problem if like there just wasn't that. If there, what like what is racism? Like who fucking even made up that shit? Like well, it's it, that's a that's a big deep thing. But <laughs> it's so I feel, weird. But like comedy and a lot of people that don't and I I forget who said this. I think I for, I there but basically what comedy is. Who cares who said it? It's because <laughs> I don't care. But. They said that all comedy is is tragedy with a little time. Mm-hmm. That's it. Mm-hmm. There's because if you, I mean, fuck, how many times have you been hanging out with anybody, family member, mom, f- best friend, and they slip and bust their ass? Oh, you yeah. laugh like fuck, and you know they're hurt, and you look at them and they're crying, and you're like, <laughs> I'm so, and it's funny and it sucks. Being a parent's even worse because oh my god, your kid's like, why are you so funny? There's but, a whole Instagram account dedicated to that it's called kids getting hurt and it's hilarious i don't have any kids so maybe it's wrong of me to watch it but it is so funny if you ever need to pick me up my wife used to send me videos of him having full meltdowns in like target because she thought because she was she was a stay-at-home mom so Mm -hmm. she thought it was funny as fuck and i'm like at work i'm like don't send this to me and then once i was around it enough i'm like this is it's kind of funny because they melt over the dumbest shit Uh but um so yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that's, the point is that that's all funny is, is something really horrible happening and making fun. And that's why there's that whole, there's the hashtag too soon. Mm. And there's sometimes, cause I, 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 I know people that I, I'm abrasive. Mm-hmm. I know people that make me seem like a fucking, like a marshmallow cloud. I'm so like, cause they are just <laughs> like horrible shit to where I'm like, I can't, I don't know if I can even be friends with you anymore. Oh cause that's like, it's bad. Cause it's way too soon. And it mm-hmm. maybe is. Forever is too soon. Mm-hmm. But then again, there's probably people watching this that are like, you know, there's certain subjects you should never be funny about. And I say, well, you know what? Then fucking don't watch my... Too. Yeah, like... I can do what I want, I just can... like you can do what you want, and everybody mm-hmm. can... You could do your own thing, 
but you can't be mad at someone else because they laughed at something that was innocent. And comedians never are malicious because malicious no. is hate. Comedians are just being funny. Mm -hmm. And people are just, they're fucking sensitive. And also, like, most of the time when something is funny, it's because it's half true or fully right. true, right. you know? Um, you know who else is fucking really, really, like, cutthroat is uh, Anthony Jeselnik. Some of his material is like that name fucking, sounds familiar. I'm sure you've seen him before, but like his humor is like so it's like dark, like abortions and fucking like just 9 11 jokes. Like it's really bad. Like, I've, bad I think shit. I've heard about him watching Joe Rogan stuff because I think yeah, that, that specifically he's been when, on his podcast before. When that because he's the one that does the 9 11 jokes, and everybody's mm -hmm. like, What the fuck? and he was like, Fuck you, and does them anyway, literally. But it's like, you know, whenever people put these boundaries on things, me personally, it just makes me want to do it more, you it's, know? It's a, it's a mentality that when you're told no, well, fuck you, watch this. Uh -huh, Hold my beer. It's like, why? It's like with prohibition and everything. It's like, they're just making, they're like forcing people to get sneaky about it because it's like, it's going to happen no matter what. Right. Like, you might as well just accept that shit and roll with it. Right. <laughs> It's the thing is, I feel like <clears throat> it's it's the psychology of, it's it's the same thing as when, as a kid, you're like, I dare you. Well, fuck, now I gotta do it. Mm -hmm, they dared me. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing when they're like, whatever you do, <laughs> don't touch that. <gasps> do you know what I'm saying? You're like, oh, uh, okay. Uh, look at him, he's so cute. <laughs> this is my new obsession. <laughs> he's adorable. I uh, went in and saw this well i didn't see it my kid saw it in the store and he's like daddy and we've we've never been around these and he was mm -hmm. like daddy i want to get this i'm like get the fuck away from wait a minute let me see that uh -huh. and i was like and i've it's seen cute. them forever and like who cares but i was like oh i, I like the pennywise mm -hmm. even the modern one mm -hmm. so then i was like fuck so i went on my amazon oh, no. and i have like fucking 15 of them on my wish list now. that's the way to do it that's the way to do it because then i was like if anybody's interested i have a new mm -hmm. obsession and i have a what certain are they called? pop 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 something, yeah. Pop it or something yeah. like that. Yeah, I've got a few, I've got a few Disney ones. <laughs> um, we both know Phoenix Marie. Mm -hmm. She, I think, if I remember correctly, she's got one of the biggest collections. Like, she's got an entire room dedicated to these little wow. fuckers. Wow. I'm like, uh, give me the monsters. Like, I want the Frankensteins mm -hmm. and the Freddy Kruegers and the Jasons. And I got like two different Jasons on there, like the Bride of Frankenstein. Oh, I didn't know they did all of those. They did all like the old How school fun. original vampire or original monsters. So there's mm -hmm. the creature from the blue, uh, black, the blue lagoon, uh -huh. black lagoon, blue lagoon. Uh huh. Um, there's uh, the Wolfman. There's uh, the Phantom of the Opera. There's Dracula. Is there a blob one? I don't think I saw a blob one. We need a blob one. We need a blob one. Come on. He's an OG monster. That's very true. <laughs> There's uh they did have the cool thing is they've got the they've got a Jason Voorhees that's got the mask on. And they've got several like they there's two or three versions of him. There's two uh -huh. or three versions of each one, like depending on what their hands are doing. Um, but then they have one of Jason Voorhees where he's wearing overalls and a bag over his head with one eye cut out. And I'm like, fuck, that's, that's going to be my prize, Whoa. but I'm not going to do, and they're expensive because they're mm -hmm. collector, mm -hmm. but mine are going to sit out like this. I'm yeah. not going to put them cause I'm like, what's the point in having them if you're not going to enjoy right? them? Right? Yeah, totally. Like, I don't want a bunch of box. clear boxes sitting here. And I kind of wish that they would just make the boxes look a little more appealing. Like if they are hoping that people will keep them in them, like why not make it just like totally clear like n less labels or something you right. know just to make it more of a display case because i mean but he looks great there yeah. <laughs> um all righty well we're gonna get you out of here soon but there's a hidden mickey in his hair <laughs> that's another thing i'm obsessed with is finding hidden mickeys what's a hidden mickey <laughs> well it's there's a few um. different kinds there's like either three Three circles with one one big one for the head and then two small ones for the ears. Okay. That's oh, like a classic Mickey. Mickey. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. There's also one where it's like his profile of him standing, his whole body. And and then there's like a side a side view of it where I feel like it looks I mean it technically it's supposed to be smaller, the ears are supposed to be smaller, but no, I just can't not see them everywhere. Whenever yeah, I, see I see three them. circles, I'm like, oh, there's a hidden Mickey. But they oh. are everywhere. Now I'm going to be obsessed. I'm going to find them. Okay, if you want to hear obsession. So there's one of the things when you go to stay at the Disneyland Resort, they've got, and there's a few different buildings that are named after the parks, like Adventureland, Fantasyland, etc. So um, 
the one that we stayed in was um, Frontierland, and they have a model in the lobby of like the, the land. And so I'm looking at the model, and I'm like, oh, I wonder if they have the hidden Mickeys in here, and they do. The ones that are like on the ride that you see on Big Thunder are in the model, and it just blew my fucking brains out. I was like, wow, this That's is crazy. attention to detail. Like they are above and beyond. And then I just uh, can stop now smiling. I'm gonna look for those things. They're now everywhere, I'm, and I'm gonna see them too. There's an app. There's an app for it. So you can find them. There's, no, I have not even close to finding all of them. There's so many. There's like. I don't even know, thousands probably. And there's oh, new ones happening all the time, and there's some that I'll never find because those parts of the park have been closed or refurbished right. and stuff, so I'm like, it'll never be over. <laughs> you know something else is fucked up, too? Speaking of, like, now that you've seen it, you can't unsee it. You can't. <laughs> um, have you ever seen the ones with advertising, with the signs? Like, have you ever seen the Arrow and FedEx? Oh, yeah. Have you ever noticed that the in 7-Eleven that the last N is lowercase where everything else is uppercase? Google, mm, go weird. look at like weird advertising things mm -hmm. and there's like a fucking laundry list of these weird advertising like the lowercase n uh -huh. or the, the arrow and once you see it, it. You, yeah, once you see it you're like fuck and you can't, every time I look at FedEx I'm like there's the arrow and then you have to like refocus and go oh there's the letters around it. You want something to fuck you up? Yeah. Google or look up Tom Cruise middle tooth and you'll never be able to see him the same ever again tom but there's cruise. just one middle tooth in there mm -hmm. tom cruise middle tooth there's just one in the middle it fucked me up for <laughs> life i'm like wow i'll never see him the same <laughs> so hmm. true that's interesting <laughs> Oh my so God. there's Easter eggs for you guys. Yeah. Alrighty, <laughs> let's get to because as much as I love doing this, we got to wrap this up because you got to get uh, out of here. Yeah. Wow. Um, oh shit. Yeah. It fine. goes by quick, right? It does. Um, so this is the part where I like to ask uh, girls um, for advice, not for me, but for like if there's someone coming in in the industry, boy or girl, mm -hmm. if you had any advice to give to someone new, mm -hmm. whatever it would be, what would you what would you say? Hmm. Well, the first thing that comes to mind would probably be taking care of your body, like your health, your physical health. Mental health, too, is definitely, like, super duper important. I think um, the idea of making the money in such a short time and, you know, maybe gaining some sort of, like, fame is very, it's all super enticing, but I don't know if people realize the kind of mental come down, maybe. I don't know if this is the right word, but... The, for instance, like when you do these kink scenes, there's like you have all your endorphins and everything's popping and running and then you kind of like have this crash of everything coming down. Right. And I feel like that kind of happens almost every time, obviously not to the extent of when I do one of these kinds right. of scenes, but it kind of happens every time because there's all this energy and, and things are happening on set and everything's um, being filmed and coming together. And then afterwards, you kind of have this drop. So I think it's it's super important to have like someone to talk to or a partner or somebody to just like, you know, maybe you don't talk about what you did that day or whatever, but just have like some kind of support system to, to talk about things because right. I think it can be really mentally straining on people to be like, wow, I just, like, got fucked or whatever for, like, and, and everyone's going to see it. Or, I mean, I, I don't really know because I don't, personally deal with the mental like problem right. but I know so many people do and it's like it's it's hard for me to wrap my mind around it but I think having like a, a somebody just to like I don't know like get a hug from or something after it really it it, it makes a big difference I think people correlate sex to interrupt you I think people mm -hmm. correlate sex with affection mm -hmm. because it is it's very but when you oh, can hear it becomes very cold and sterile mm -hmm. and it's very like, and i get this even as a as a top as a dominant like i get to where um we started doing a series at kink that was a, a school of submission and it's four mm -hmm. days with me mm -hmm. and it's as intense and as deep as i can it's basically oh, a, yeah. it's it's, a, it's it's kind of like a play off of when i used to run the training of o. so mm -hmm. i took the best parts of the entire run of training of o, and took what I liked most, but there's never this level of, okay, well now you're gonna go to the upper floor and be a slave. It mm -hmm. was, and I, I pitched it to Kink as the journey of the slave, mm -hmm. or journey of the submissive. So it's, you come in, 
we figure out what makes you tick, what makes you don't, and kind of, basically it's like a military thing. Like I come in and I, I dissect you, yeah. and then I break you down mm -hmm. and make you feel like you're nothing. Mm -hmm. And I analyze you for two days with one with me, and then I bring in a guy and we do sex and bondage. Mm -hmm. And I kind of, you can't win for losing, kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, and I kind of break you down, and then day three is where I destroy you. I, mm -hmm. I put you in situations where you cannot win no matter what. And it's hard physical it's so labor. Frustrating. But then on day four, no matter what I and I put you in the most intense bondage and intense situations. Mm -hmm. But even if you last for thirty seconds, you did it. Mm -hmm. So it's a break you down to build so you up gratifying. situation. Um, I'm trying to remember why I brought that up now. Well, There's the uh, the maybe like the mental uh, support yeah. of going through that. Process. So this the once you, and, and the girls they go home and I'm like take your phone and I show them I set their phones up so they can do it and mm -hmm. then they record this the reflection. Oh, absolutely. So after that, once after you you've come do. down and once you've had the shower mm -hmm. and you're just by yourself and you're with just you you're like. No. when you need that hug or you mm -hmm. want that person to talk to and then they would do these reflections and that's become the thing that people seem to enjoy the most yeah. but the crazy thing when the four days are over and Becky laughs at me about it she was like and she tells the girl she was like you should see him he's like a little puppy he doesn't know what to do with because I'm the same way because <laughs> I've invested all everything every ounce of energy like even mm -hmm. when we're not on camera I'm analyzing what happened that day I'm thinking about what we can do the next mm -hmm. day I'm trying to so I'm focused for four days solid on this this oh. one individual, and when yeah. it's over with, I'm like, "Where'd they go? Now like, what? Where's my friend? Like you and, and I get the same. So I get there's that when you put, and I don't know about a single day thing. Like I mm -hmm. I always feel that there's a connection to a certain degree because it's intimate what we do because there's not a cock inside of a hole. For sure. But there's the level of doing like four days is that's a lot and you get to where you're like uh oh, that why why'd they leave like mm -hmm. I thought, and you can't help so i kind of understand people who would have that like but we had sex why are they would they just go home and we don't talk mm -hmm. anymore so i kind of get it mm -hmm. yeah it, to me i've kind of approached it in a different way where i'm like oh cool i get to like meet up with this stranger and we're gonna have sex and then like that's it and then I don't have to deal with them anymore. <laughs> Sometimes I do. I do right. want to deal with them. But um, it's really funny you said that because, um, I I mean, I know, God, I mean, like, how many girls have gone through training about, like, there's been so many. Right. And, and I'll forever feel, like, after spending those four days with James, that we've, like, got this, like, bond. And it's mm -hmm. so weird because it's, like, it's, it's, because he's an intense know, motherfucker, too. It's so too. weird, but it's like I'll, I'll forever feel this, like, connection to him. And it's not, like, it's not sexual, and it's, I, I guess it's, like, friendshipy. I don't, I don't really know how to put mm -hmm. my finger on it, but it's all, like, going through those four days and then, like, going to bed and, like, being exhausted and, and, and then going back the next day. And it was, it was this, like, weird process of, like, once it was over, I was like, well, now what do I do? Where's James? What do I do now? Maybe I can get his number and call him and sometime. it's so weird, though, because it's like, I know that this has happened, like, a hundred other times before me. There's been so many other girls, and it's just, it's so odd that how how the brain works. But it's the same thing, like, with the military. Mm -hmm. and because they, the loyalty that they develop going through basic training oh, to where they're done the same way. They're torn apart and built back up the way they, they, they want them mm -hmm. built. So as much as this drill sergeant and my brother, I've got family that went through the military. I didn't. Mm -hmm. I respect the fuck out of him for doing mm -hmm. it because I couldn't put up with someone yelling at me like that. So <laughs> not hats without off to orgasm all of you. traumas later. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that's a fine compromise. But he, you know, they there's this loyalty and this, and they like fucking die for it. Die hard for and, the brotherhood. And 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 for the country and for mm -hmm. because they aren't brainwashed, but they're. They went in and committed to doing a thing, and when you commit, you're all or nothing. Mm -hmm. Just like with the training, and mm -hmm. obviously we're in a sexual level where, and I'm not to dismiss the military, mm -mm. but it's I think that's it's kind of the same thing. It's like there's and it's like I I guarantee you, and I I'll ask him next time I talk to him, so I can bring this up later. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll ask my brother next time I see him, and I guarantee you he can tell you the drill sergeant, he can tell you any commanding officer he probably had through his entire career in the military. I mm -hmm. bet you because of the same. And having to say their word. names over and over right. again when you respond. Well, it's stuff. repetition. Yeah, totally. that's how you, it, how you learn. Retrain them. Mm -hmm. 
So, all right, That's sorry, wild. I cut you off. You said, was there something oh, else you were gonna add? Well, no, it was, uh, it was obviously having the, the mental health, I think is really important to balance out. Um, and then the physical health aspect, because when I joined the industry, I mean, I thought I knew like how my body was working, but I really learned a whole lot about it that I never did know. And um, uh, just like really taking care of yourself, you know, because you have to remember you're, you're, you're going to, to work with other people and you want to, you know, smell nice and be clean. And I don't know. I just, it was, it's strange to say this now because it's like, I don't feel like I put that much effort into it when I first was in the industry. I was like, this is, this is me. This is how I am. But now I'm like, oh, I want to make sure like I'm underneath my fingernails clean. Like I make sure like my, my teeth are clean, like everything, uh, just so that I know that like my scene partner is as most comfortable as possible. Because right. for some people, including myself, it can be really weird to just like meet someone and then like have sex with them and right. someone's filming it and then they're like, all right, now do this and switch this and now take cum on your face. And I just, I think that the physical health, like, you know, if you if you feel like something's wrong, like ask, ask somebody, you know, I'm pretty, there's a lot of girls and guys that are, really like open and willing to give advice and you know like does does this smell weird like is this normal right. like should I be pissing blood like no like you should and, and to not ignore your body like right. that is you know your body's always going to tell you something for a reason and there's there's something going on so you got to listen to it and right. and I think that's you know the main main thing is you just got to take care of yourself because you can get I mean, I had sex with a lot of people before porn, but I never felt like I had so many like health issues for whatever reason. And I think it's because I'm exposed to so much, so many, so many different people right. so often. I felt like I had a lot of sex back then, but it was like one or two people consistently. Right. And now it's like, I mean, if you're really working, you could have sex with five to seven, I mean, if you're doing a gangbang, you could have sex with like 30 people in a week. Right. So you, you gotta take into consideration all the different, like, people's germs and stuff, you know? And like, you just, you know, shower and- And, and your own and pH. Yeah, and... yeah. And I think the main thing is, yeah, just to try and really take care of yourself, like mentally and physically and not be afraid to ask. Like, I will never, be offended if some and some girls like oh or some guy you know like what if what is this or do you think or um and and reach just reach out don't be afraid to say no don't be afraid to ask right. uh, reach out for advice because right. we are a wealth of knowledge and I've learned so much about myself in this industry because of other people and um yeah, I was really, really thankful for my experience in the industry. I feel like right. I've grown so much and just learned a lot about my body and what I like and dislike. And yeah, and welcome to the industry. <laughs> Enjoy the go. ride. Yeah. That's what I would say. Hold on tight. <laughs> I've actually had, um, I had one guy, <clears throat> and because you shoot this and you're around, because we're around naked people, we're around mm -hmm. bodies and sex and things that are very personal or private for most people. Mm -hmm. So you kind of, you can't be like you were talking about earlier with some of your partners before sex, like, ah, that, that's gay. I don't want to be around other guy. Mm -hmm. You, that's got to kind of go away. Absolutely. And I've had a, a performer or maybe two, I know one for sure who came up to me. He's like, JP, can I talk to you for a minute? And I was like, yeah. And he was like over here. And I was like, yeah, sure, dude. And I walk, we walk away from set mm -hmm. and he's like, can you look at this? And he pulls his pants down and I, he trusts my opinion, mm -hmm. so I, I'm not a doctor, but I am also, a, 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 after 15 plus years of being in the industry. You've seen some shit. So what do I do? I get down on my knees and inspect his junk. And I know I'm not putting my hands all over sure. it. Sure. But I, but I did, I looked at him, I was like, do you, show me what you're talking about, because mm -hmm. I don't want to just start plundering around mm -hmm. your penis. Mm -hmm. And he was like, this right here, and he pulled his junk to the side, and it was a very itty bitty ingrown hair, but he was mm. like, he was like, oh, what do you, I'm, and I said, this is what it looks like, and I asked mm -hmm. him, blah, 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 and we did what I know about things, mm -hmm. and he was like, yeah, it's only this, this, and this. I was like, that sounds like an ingrown hair, and yeah. if, if he wouldn't have pointed it out, I wouldn't have seen it, and I don't mm -hmm. think the close-up would have ever caught it, Right. but he was aware of it, but it was, it, again, it was one of, like you said, it's one of those things that we, it's better to ask and to I talk mean, to someone who does this all the time. You might as well. I mean, right. what's the worst that's going to happen? You're going to 
whatever, not do the scene and go, hopefully, go get treated, you know, and, right. and get it taken care of. But, I mean, I wish there were more people like that that would not be embarrassed or, you know, shy to just be like, hey, is this okay? Is this normal? Which is you weird know? because you're getting naked and fucking on camera. Why are you... So weird, right? Right. I mean, I'm I'm, a, I, I'm not shy when it comes to that because of what we do. Mm -hmm. But like in regular life, I'm shy. So it's weird. I don't know. It, I, you know what? I have a very similar experience with being in the industry. It's... For whatever reason, the more that I... The more open that I have been, it does make me feel a little more like, oh, I need to be more reserved now. Yeah, let me and like, this up Yeah, a exactly. Bit. It's so funny, though, because it's like you would feel like you'd just be more and more liberated. But... I don't know. Maybe it's because we put so much out on camera uh -huh. that we, there's the, yeah. all right, maybe I should hone it in a little That's more. also why I like Disneyland is because it's just so, like, it's so wholesome and it's not sexual. It's like a very, very opposite kind of vibe to what right. my majority of my life lifestyle is. So. And you is don't nice. go in there because, I mean, that did, and not porn people because mm -hmm. I know, it, and I, there's several girls that I know, I don't think I know any guys, but there's several girls who are very... Disney oriented, mm -hmm. and they don't like they have their poses that they do on porn, but they don't do that when they're hanging out. Like it's, I don't, know. I don't really like people to make sexual jokes either when we're at Disneyland. It's not, it's not appropriate. I don't feel that it is. I mean, obviously, you know, sometimes you gotta say something or whatever, and you're right. in a mood. But for the most part, I, I like things to stay really wholesome, and it's, yeah, it's weird. I think it's like <laughs> we were talking about earlier. I think it's the nostalgia. I think it's yeah. the. That was pure. Yeah, yeah, it's innocent. Yeah, so I don't, no, you don't mm -hmm. get to do that to now. Yeah. Which is funny because you and your best friend mm -hmm. are pretty dirty, dirty girls. I know, I so know it's to... so funny because we'll, we'll be like yapping at our, our boyfriends, we'll say something, and we're like, oh, don't say that, we're at You're Disney. Being nasty. Don't be a dirty man like that. We're at <laughs> Disney right now, just save it for later. Yeah, wait till we get to the hotel. Right? So that, that's then technically anything that. goes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's different. Then we'll bring it up. <laughs> um, alrighty, like I said, I hate to rush, but we gotta get you out of here. Um, no worries. You were awesome. Well, thank you so for much. Thank you me. It was an honor and a pleasure. Um, I'll. When social media comes out, I'll let you know. I'll hit it all over the place. Yes. All right. Thank you. See ya. Bye, guys. Mwah. Packs out. I love it. <laughs> all right. Fun.